Move. Call the Community Service Committee meeting to order. And Mr. Bill John Baker, would you give the invitation, please? Gladly. Bow with me, please. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day that we might come together and do your work for the Cherokee people. Keep your loving hand over the soldiers overseas and their families here at home. And give each and every one here uh, your blessing and traveling grace as they leave these meetings today to go back to their home communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. And Shelly, you do the road. Harley Buzzer? Here. Chris Sell? Here. Bill England? Here. Bill John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Julia Cubs? Bradley Cobb? Joe Crittenden? Jody Fishing Hall? Here. Meredith Fraley? Janelle Fulbright? Here. Don Garvin? Right. Tina Glory Jordan? Present. Curtis Snell? Here. David Thornton? Here. Kara Callen Watts? Oh, honey. Sorry. We do have a quorum. And thank you. I want to welcome uh, any visitors and all the staff out to our meeting this morning. Thank you for coming at the uh, community service meeting at 10 o'clock. So we're going to move on to approval of minutes for the April 12, 2011 regular session. Are your motion to approve? So Make a motion to be approved. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Let's move right into reports. We've got some discussion to do today, so I'd like to move in those as fast as we can. So, Norma, would you come forward and... I know again we have your report, but as standard, you know, I like to have you come up and give us an overview of things you may have left out of your report. Okay, I'll just bring you up to date on a few things. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, hand out information on our FDPIR food distribution national conference that's going to be happening uh, June 6th through 10th <clears throat> at the Hard Rock. And uh, I just have to read the title of it to you because I think it's so cool. This is at the Hard Rock, and it's rocking native families with healthy foods because that's how we roll. But they did a nice job on that. And uh, so you have until the May 21st when reservations are due, and if you'll notice, the attendee code is food. So they're keeping right in the theme of what they do. But I think this is going to be a really nice one, and if, if you have a chance to attend, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, bring you up today a little bit on our, our Veteran Center building. We haven't talked about it in a while because because it is a, a Godugi project that brings together a lot of volunteerism, donations, as well as what uh, the half million that the tribe has set aside for this project. Uh, it's taken longer. It's, a, it's an unusual building project, but if the weather holds, you should begin to see some uh, activity out on that site with uh, working on the site plan and uh, foundation. So we hope we're really going to get started. We, uh, uh, our bidding process uh, was a little slower than we had hoped, but uh, we're, we're anxious to see some action out there. As far as our uh, CDC um, child care building in Stillwell, we're still awaiting approval from the federal level uh, to get started on that. They do have to do some pr approval on uh, some of the construction, so hopefully that will come through any day and we can get started on letting those bids. And on our building in Nowata and Collinsville, those are, I believe, just about ready to go out for bid. We're trying to bid those together so we can get a, a better price on a, you know, a, a dual package. So that's where we are on our buildings. The Collinsville building, is that also a uh, food distribution? Yes, Collinsville. it's food distribution only. For okay. the no water building is more of a multi-purpose. Okay. It'll have a senior nutrition side and some offices. Mr. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. will they be anticipating ever adding on to the building? Do they need to design it to where it can be added on? For the any? Collinsville? Yeah, for the Collinsville side. Uh, we've not had that discussion at this point, but where they're going to put it, there's certainly room, and I believe because it's going to be a metal building that that won't be an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I can certainly, I, I believe that's probably something that they w will do, but because there's already a community center there, mm -hmm. and they have a nutrition site, 
I don't anticipate that we would need to for the foreseeable future, but, right. you know, it, the way the building is constructed, I think it would be pretty easy. And there's plenty of land around it. Yeah. Norman, I have a question for you, I guess. Uh, will I hear, when, when will that be starting and when do you start taking applications for that? For regular life here, yeah. there it's taken in the end of November, first of December. Okay, does that include uh, putting insulation in houses or the ceiling <coughs> type? No. It's strictly for it's strictly for heating, for heating and bills. And, yes. And heat. Is and there a program that uh, that could assist families with that type of stuff? Uh, Charlie here. Where is that the materials building does that the materials that you have. For help for uh, insulation in would, homes. Would that fall under winterization? Yes. Okay. Yes, with our okay. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Uh, Norman, how is that line heat supplement? Was it from Sidco? Mm -hmm. How is that going to, or how is it working? Oh, it's really going well. In fact, Jerry just told me that uh, we just got another $129,000 check. It's a uh, five hundred thousand dollars and maybe some change, and we've gotten uh, with that check. I think we're at three hundred and seventy-five. Three seventy-five. So we have about a hundred, another hundred and twenty-nine thousand dollars to come in on that, and that they'll do it incrementally. But we've gotten a big hunk of it already. Now I know we were filling up propane tanks. Uh, is there a way we could? Uh, uh, pay ahead for this fall on electricity for those that. Yeah, I think uh, Jerry, do you want to speak to that? He, I think he was on the phone with them even this morning. Those individuals that have total electric, I was wondering if there was a way that we might forward some money to them for this fall. Yeah, we're, as a matter of fact, okay. the next we we paid out propane payments the first go around. Okay. And we'll start with this new allotment here. We'll start making payments to those clients with electricity. Unfortunately, this company will not let you make payments directly to clients. But we can make them to the, the company. utility company. And, and where I'm going with this, our wood participants and our pellet participants, with our regular LIHEAP program, we make direct payments to those clients. Mm -hmm. Sitco won't let us do that. So what we're doing for those clients, we're going to have and pay electric bills for them. Okay. All of them have electricity. Okay. So those that are heating with wood or pellets, we're going to make an electric payment. And if, be, if they're also heating with electric, you'll we'll be, be making an electric okay. payment for okay. the mm -hmm. and and Natural gas. Natural gas, propane. It's a standard payment of $368, I believe, for each household. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it's a real good program. It's a great program. So everyone that was probably on the program this fall, we'll see something maybe for this spring that will go towards next fall. Exactly. Okay. And, and the utility companies will just credit their accounts. Excellent. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Mr. Snell, you got a comment or question? Yes, to uh, Norma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Norma had a comment on This is Scott and Salina. Her trailer house had burned down. And did, did she contact you? Do you remember? That is not a name that I remember, but I I talk to a lot of people, but okay. no, I don't. Okay. But anyway, you may uh, want to contact her. She contacted me and she was quite disturbed, as to say. Okay. And, uh, Do you have a contact number for her? Yes, ma'am. Six, Wait. two, nine. That's a... Uh, Let's get, do that in private, please. Yeah. No, we'll get yeah, we'll on that and get the information. Thank you. Anything else, Kurt? No. Thank you, Norm. Ms. Fulbright, you had a comment? Yes. Since he brought up burnout, it made me think. Uh, I had some questions from some different people down in Sequoia County who had friends or relatives who had a total burnout. And I guess they had applied maybe for mortgage assistance and then qualified. Is there any one-time payment or any way of helping people who have a burnout? Yeah, anyone who has a burnout or a disaster through like maybe the flooding or tornadoes, 
if they have a total loss, they just need to come to our office. We do have an emergency program. They also need to get with Red Cross. The first thing they need to do if they lose their house and don't have a place to live is to get with the Red Cross. I, I don't have that number with me, but there's a 1-800-DISASTER number I can get to you all. That's the first thing they need to do because Red Cross can shelter them immediately if they don't have a place to go. Then they need to get with our office as soon as they can. If it's a burnout, we will need, not at the time they apply, but at some point we'll need a fire marshal's report. And then we can make a payment. And, and that payment uh, is going to depend on several things. If they do have uh, some type of um, uh, fire insurance, we may, they may not as get as, as much as someone who does not have, but each one's evaluated differently, but we do have, and uh, Jerry, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's an income guideline on that one. Just resource. Okay. So, well, we have been referring everyone to Cooks and Hills Community Action because they have been furnishing people with a nice trailer, mobile home, right. or, but I don't have no that. That's no more. So. But, but we do have a cash payment to help them replace clothing and do some things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilor Sobel, any question or comment? Yeah, oh, I've got a uh, ministerial alliance type uh, leader that wants to know if, where they can come in this area here around Tahlequah. And they said that they have food and clothing and things that they distribute and give away. Where's a good location or, you know, a good contact that they could call? And I, I think that it would be really what good if they would work with the community food pantry, the care pantry here in Tahlequah. Uh, the care pantry has um, a location downtown. It's across from Workman's Department Store. And uh, they're open, I believe, every day. And they distribute food. Uh, a lot of the churches refer to that place because the churches in town, many of them support right. the care pantry. They also give out lunches to the homeless. So that's a good one. As far as uh, clothing, uh, help in crisis, uh, the Zoe Foundation would be a couple of places. And if, if you want some phone numbers and addresses and things, I can get those to you. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Norman. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Self at Community Services. Uh, good morning. Hello. How are y'all? Okay. Uh, Charlie couldn't be here today, but I'll be more than happy to take any questions you have. Any questions? Yes, Ms. Uh What's the progress of the 15 houses up by Redbird? We are making extreme progress. Um, we've got several completed. Um, we have two that are complete, except they don't have the septics in. All the geothermals are in, and all the finalizations are being done. Uh, should be done by the end of this year. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Ms. Fishing, huh? Yeah, could you get me a list of every on these SIP phones of mm -hmm. all the participants in each county? Because I received a complaint on one of them. Well, three of them, I guess. And I wanted to see. If there's anything to it. Okay. Yes, okay. The other thing is, uh, they sent me some maps. I want maps of all the water lines, our rural water districts. And they sent me a map, but then they went and put three counties on the same map, so virtually you can see nothing. Okay. <laughs> can you give me one with Ottawa, one with Adair, one with Delaware? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Please. Maybe one with Cherokee County, because I know some of the lines go close to it. And then on the Redbird Smith Edition, can you explain? Did you talk about that? You sent us a thing that showed that each one of the houses was costing a quarter of a million dollars to build. Yes. What it, <laughs> when, you include, that. when you include the land costs, the water lines, and the roads, of course, the fewer houses you have on the property, the more those costs. So as we put more homes out there, those particular costs get dispersed and that number goes down. Now, the individual houses themselves, they're not anywhere near that. Okay. It's How many houses do we plan on putting out there? Oh my gosh, I, I don't even recall. Um, those are on five to ten acre lots, and I know on the five acre lots you can put at least five homes on each lot. I don't remember off the top of my head the total acreage or the total number of homes that can go out there, but I can get that for you. Could you, because if you're talking about putting five houses, because I've heard the chief talk about how he wants to put these on five or ten lots, and maybe the mm -hmm. kid will come home, maybe the grandkid, right. maybe the put, grandmother. Put them on that so we're talking about a 50-year thing. 
where it could be a while. It could be a while, yes. Yeah, to do this, and that's only if they do that. And I know for a fact that Charlie had told me at one time um, Fairfield was going to get done faster than Redbird because Redbird was having so much trouble with the fight and the arguments and it's UKB, some of us down there about the stop grounds. And then he, they turned around and told me back, no, they said we're going to go ahead and have to do Redbird first and Fairfield second because I knew we had many participants for Fairfield. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious as to how long they think this is going to go on and when they will have people for this. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Fred. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you met with Locust Grove about their introduced water problem there. Is there a follow-up meeting plan? Um, I don't. I don't. I'm sure there is. I don't have that information with me, but I can get it for you. Yeah, well, I'd okay. like to come to the meeting. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Baker, has a question. Yeah. The. I mean, I agree that if they put five houses on a lot, that uh, they won't have to. Do another road, they won't have to do another water line. But but still, you're deeding off 10 acres to somebody. I, I assume that's what you're doing. Well, it's going to stay in the nation's name. Okay. And these houses have a cost of $238,000. So, and you've got a couple of them finished. Yep. That's when do you anticipate somebody moving in, and what is their house payment going to be? We don't have as far as the house payment or anything like that finalized but it's not going to be long before we do have people moving in it's just some finalized decisions have to be made so we don't know how much it's going to cost them to live there no sir i don't have that information can you get it some water line plats for Cherokee County. Mm -hmm. Would you be so kind as to send those to me too? Thank you. Ms. Fitch, you want to another question? We don't know how much these houses are going to cost. <coughs> the individuals? Mm -hmm. No, I that seems a little back when when I go to build something mm -hmm. or when we go to buy something, we usually want to know how much it costs. I mean, we just don't go to building with no budget. Yes, ma'am. This was the one. was this to build like that? This was an R project. It yeah, was but somebody was in charge of building these houses with no budget, and we do not know how much they're going to cost. Who was we don't have we know how much the homes are going to cost. We don't know how much they're going to cost the individuals. How much are the homes going to cost? Well, if you include the water line and everything, I believe I sent that information over at the beginning. We're up to a quarter of million dollars a house. That's that's including the road, water line, and purchase of the land. Heck, I could build three houses for a quarter of a million dollars instead of one. That sounds outrageous. When I go that, back, here's the problem. When I go back to Stillwell, I tell my people, we're building these Indian homes down here, and they're going to be a quarter of a million dollar Indian homes. They're looking at me like I'm plumb stupid. The individual homes themselves, just the homes, of, yeah. the cost of the home is about $118,000. 118000 Okay. And that's what... Are we, okay, okay. here's my quick question. Is Cherokee Nation going to suck up the other 130000 for the infrastructure, so we're not going to. Are we going to charge these people 118? What do we charge them? Beg your pardon? No, ma'am. We're not charging them 118. Uh, that, like I said, those decisions have not been finalized, as far as I know. I can get that information. I know there has got to be, and I don't know if you've been okay or told us not to answer or what, but there has got to be a number that's been batted around there that we're going to charge these people. I, I don't have that number. I apologize. I can get. I can find out where I can. But I don't have that number. Okay. Could you find out for me? Yes, ma'am. I would appreciate it. And I'd also uh, want to put in a request on the SIP panels home, the self help home. There seems to be three or four houses that are just sitting out there. They're probably 90% complete. Mm -hmm. Hadn't been any work done on in the last mm -hmm. two to three weeks. These people are ready to move in those houses, but we can't get, probably take a day and a half to complete the houses. So what we're doing is having people that are ready to move in are just sitting there. So I intend to keep more on top of this, and I'll be writing some emails about those particular homes. And uh, if you would pass that on. We need to get those houses finished. I realize we're working on Redbird Smith, 
But still, you don't have people allocated to Redbird Smith, and you do have on the South Health Home. Those people are ready to move in. So anyway, I'll give it to uh, you <coughs> on that later. Okay. Okay, thank you for the report. Uh, Harvey, could I ask one more? Yeah, we got one more question here. We'll take one more it, question. It's not really a question, yes, but could we make sure that Charlie's here next time? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank yes, you. Thank you. <coughs> Roads and transportation, Michael Lynn. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you have my report as well. Uh, some, just a couple items I would like to bring up is uh, the public meetings that we've been holding a series of. We've uh, got seven meetings scheduled that started actually last Thursday. Uh, we're ending up next Thursday uh, of next week, the 26th, uh, holding public hearings or uh, public meetings to, to accept comments on projects or roads that we're proposing to add to our TIP or our construction programs, sometimes what I refer to it as. Um, so far, the meetings that we have had, uh, we've received positive comments back on uh, on the projects. Uh, we've had decent attendance from the area residents, but uh, looking forward to getting these finished up and getting a uh, resolution submitted to this uh, this body for uh, to move forward with our tip update. Any questions for my fishing Yeah, out on Hill Hill Project. Mm -hmm. I was out there this weekend, and I had two or three complaints from the landowners on the fencing. You all have logged off at least two hay meadows that I know of that they're getting ready to do next month. The gates, and the owners are a little upset about it. They said they didn't put the gates back where they were supposed to, and now they're going to fence it to the hay meadows, and we're just going to have to go over there and do some gutting. I've not heard that at all. Do you, can I get with you afterwards and get some names? Yeah. Okay. Any more questions for Michael? Thank you, Michael. No, thank you all. It's customary. Michael always has it on the agenda for the public comment section of the uh, agenda. Are there any public comments on road? Hearing none, thank you. Calvin with David Sullivan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Start off by the monthly disclosures. Uh, home rehabilitation, Sonia Edwards, she's a housing services employee. Uh, mortgage assistance, we got a pretty good list. Uh, Ethan Foster, who is the aunt, uh, is Sandra Bendabout, she's a housing services employee. Uh, Jeremy Boston is the housing services employee. Uh, Chance Hughes, uh, his uncle is a uh, housing authority employee, Roger Cunningham. And Ann is Tamara Wheeler, is also a housing services uh, employee, both of those are up to Jay. Uh, Brittany Copeland, she's a grandmother, is Shirley Copeland, and, uh, who's a housing services employee. Uh, Brandy Foreman, <coughs> I believe this is a cousin to Miss Fulbright. In my in ballpark there, we were a little sketchy. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. <laughs> you got a new cousin. <laughs> uh, Feather Trevino, who is the daughter of uh, Commerce employee Marie Smith. That used to be Feather Smith, who was Miss Cherokee uh, for a while. She's <coughs> by a house. Uh, Judy Mason, a niece of Commerce employee uh, Rita Whaler. Apartments. Uh, Derek Birdtail, whose father is Henry Birdtail, works down at uh, Warren Porn. Uh, Jamie Six, <coughs> Loretta Shine, who's a housing services employee. And then uh, rental assistants, uh, Kirk Walker, uh, relative of Shirley Copeland, housing services employee. Jeremy Downing, who's a housing services employee. Gretchen Newman, uh, her aunt is Anita Smith, who uh, works for me. Uh, Daphne Davis, uh, her sister-in-law is Joanne Davis out of the Salas office there. Uh, Sarah Davis, mother uh, of Joanna Davis, also in the Salas office. Uh, Tim Barr, son of community services employee Beverly, and brother to community services employee Charlie. Sonny Harper, uh, who's a human services employee, and Linda Christie, human services employee. That's the disclosures. Uh, as I mentioned last night in the report, uh, we won't have a housing authority meeting this this month. Uh, there have been a couple of names submitted uh, that you all will look at at the rules committee later this month. Uh, I mentioned the FEMA trailers last night. Uh, like I said, we're still hopeful to, to obtain some of those over at Steelwell. Uh, I haven't heard anything since probably a week ago Friday uh, from the state, uh, but we're sure hopeful that we uh, were able to get some of those. The cost is pretty minimal. 
uh, we would take all we could get our hands on. I have a uh, Mr. So. Yeah, they received an inquiry from a resident there at uh, Cherokee Heights, and apparently they um, had moved from one unit to another, and they said that they were charged the cleaning fees, and uh, they were they were pretty um, affected by that, that charge. Uh -huh. And their um, report back was that you know I found the house in a certain situation and then uh, <coughs> before I left you know I had mopped the floors and cleaned the baseboards and then done an extraordinary amount of cleaning before they uh, moved out of the unit but they were still charged a cleaning fee so is that is that something that's subjective or is that something that's standard as we, far as uh, the, my, my staff when we get a complaint I can check into it and, I, and I'll get the name after okay. this and, and I'll check into it they do a pretty good job of documenting and taking pictures and things okay. of that nature usually is the stove the refrigerator the tub toilet yeah that, that's what this kind of makes this case a little interesting because I, that's what i was wondering if it's standard or if it's kind of a, just a subjective viewpoint and saying well we you know we've got to clean this and clean that but they, well, they mentioned uh, the refrigerator but then they said that they moved the refrigerator to the other to the other unit so that you know if you got to clean the refrigerator but it went to the other unit, then uh, why is that? Yeah, I, I, I can't answer that one. I'll have yeah, to, so let me I, get the name I, afterwards I'll, and let me I'll check. I'll send you some, some feedback. I was just curious if it was, if everybody has a standard charge in that situation or if it's kind of a subjective type. No, it's more, uh, I'm hoping it's objective and they, and there's actually, you know, you know, this stove didn't get cleaned in the oven yeah. and, you know, here, so take there's a picture. A set, there's a set charge for that? I mean, yeah, there's a, it's a standard charge. Okay, so you go through and you mm -hmm. have five items <clears throat> that tally up to a certain fee. Right. right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. Miss uh, Fulbright, you had a question. I stand corrected. I've been sitting here thinking. I do know a Brandy Foreman. <laughs> She's recently married and that name didn't catch me, so... Uh, I'm kin to a lot of people in Squaw County. I hear that. Uh, but our, our application. My cousin way down the line. So. Our, our application, it asks for, you know, are you related to anyone else? Right, right. Okay, and, uh, I am. Usually they fill up the page if they are your kids. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Fulbright. We got that straight. Okay. Uh, Ms. Fishing I'll just, I'll just talk to you guys. Okay. Paul knows its name. Thank you. Right. Any more questions for today? Ms. Jordan. In that latest flood situation that we had here, did we raise the uh, income limits just a tad to try to? Yeah, when a disaster thing, a disaster situation, we do go our normal, and, and so it's uh, community services uh, is 50% of the national median that goes to 80. Okay. In, in a uh, disaster. The reason I'm asking is I had someone make an inquiry that. Um, they, they thought that they had a bad roof before the flood. Mm -hmm. And this is not necessarily a flood, but it was the hard rain. And now the roof, I guess, has fell in. But they were a tad over before. Maybe they're a tad under now. So they <coughs> Well, if it's the one, I'm familiar with one that's similar. And they were pretty much well over the 80 also. Okay. If Can I talk to you afterwards mm -hmm. and we'll see if yeah. we're talking the same person? Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no, I had one more. Ms. Watts. Thank you. On uh, the numbers, you have your, I guess, your benchmarks or mm -hmm. scorecard measures for Rogers and Tulsa County. Mm -hmm. um, I know we've had some personnel changes that I expected <coughs> to impact that positively, and I haven't seen much movement. So, what is the strategy for making sure that our folks are served according to the goals? Uh, we talk, you talking about the uh, numbers on, on the report, the projected, okay. Uh, those are projected from the year before. Uh, I can follow up, I think uh, I've given you a, a spreadsheet not all that long ago that listed. Let me, let me update that. Because uh, the perception of the community is that the rehab emergency right. assistance, that there is the need that's projected. Mm -hmm but they're, they're not getting it. So I was maybe making, hoping you could reallocate resources to make up for some of the stuff that happened in the past, even though it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I can, I'll, I'll update the spreadsheet. What generally, 
what we see is mm -hmm. in that area up in there, the incomes are a little higher, and that's where that income limit starts creeping in to, to folks uh, a little more. We and uh, but I don't know. I don't have a good answer for your question, but I can update the spreadsheet that we did uh, and, and see what the status is. Tom had a question. <clears throat> David, do we have any kind of assistance for emergencies? We was talking about one go for people that do have burnouts to, to get a home. To get a home? Yeah. Uh, we really don't have any priority. Uh, and the reason for that is we think people should have insurance. If they don't have insurance, like on a burnout, uh, they don't get any preference. Now, if they... Uh, uh, if it's not a major fire, say they have a kitchen fire, uh, which is for us, the managed apartments, that's the more common one. Uh, we would go in and if we can we can fix that without a whole lot of major cost, we will do that. But if it's a burnout, we can't go in and build everybody a new house when they uh, have a burnout. Uh, just, we don't do that. Uh, I've talked with the chief about it uh, in the past. It's not a good policy issue to do that. Um, what we do try to do is make sure that we uh, work with Norma. If we got apartments in the area, we'll try to house them in a, in a low-rent apartment. Like in your area, we don't have. So that's where we work with Norma uh, for rental assistance and try to get them housed as, as quickly as we can. Okay. Uh, is there any, uh, there's not any way that they can get a trailer or anything of that? Well, they could, through mortgage assistance, uh, get a trailer. Uh, problem is, when somebody doesn't have insurance, it's usually because they don't have a lot of money. Yeah. And they can't afford a trailer. Right. Comment. Well, comment. you know what we've got? Hang, hang on a We've got, uh, you know, people out there that are elders. Uh, this couple that uh, had a house burn out <clears throat> this month were both sitting in their 70s. Uh, you know, they don't, they lost everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything. So we've helped them, Norma's helped them, and I appreciate that very much. And uh, of course, Red Cross helped them. But uh, to get them back in someplace living where they can call their home, you know, whether it's a trailer or what it is. I think people in that situation need some help, and I don't know how we're going to help them. You know. it, it may be that we need to, uh, I say we, uh, maybe I need to visit with the chief and say, you know, there's just, there are needs out there. You know, I can understand people that, uh, if they think they're going to get a new home, they might take care of the old yeah. one, you know. But people that don't, if they've been their lifelong home, and their daddy's home, they want you know, and, uh, we run into some issues sometimes. I think I'm familiar with the one that you're talking about, mm -hmm. and they don't really want to leave that property under no circumstance. There's yeah, reasons for that. And uh, so the the lower end apartment and the rental assistance to help them, it don't work because yeah. they have other issues. They can't leave that property. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I, we can give it some thought. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know what we come up with. Because boy, it's a, that's a tough one when you when you provide yeah. a new trailer or something for for one on a burnout, you better have a stockpile of them because. Speaker, you have to come. Yeah, and and the thing is, if they have a burnout, they had a house that they don't qualify for mortgage assistance. No. And uh, that automatically disqualifies them. No. And even on one of these floods, the lady had insurance. But she owed forty-eight thousand dollars on the mobile home, and uh, insurance paid forty-seven. And now she does, you know, she got a safety tank. Mm -hmm. But it's obviously it floods, and uh, the uh, but you know now she's in no-win situation. I mean, she still owes a thousand dollars even after the insurance pays off her trailer, and now she has no home, no nothing, and. Uh, uh, and then you know David's folks were their 70s, you know, in their 70s and and stuff. They just it it would seem that we could come up with something, uh, whether it's a you know a policy change on 
if you know if you lost in a disaster or whatever, then maybe you did qualify again for mortgage assistance, even though you owned the house. <coughs> uh, but and uh, uh, these elders, it just seems like replacement home would, would be the way to go. But. I'm going to take uh, two more comments or questions, and we're going to. Move on, but if you had questions for David, you might get with him after the meeting. But I'm up to Ms. Fulbright, Ms. Jordan. Ms. Fulbright. I wanted to know when David gets through, could uh, we call Michael in back up here for a second? I had something that I forgot to ask him. Would that be something that you want the whole committee to yes. hear? Or yes. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Sure. Okay, Ms. Jordan. David, isn't the problem? on all of the burnouts and the flooding and the catastrophe your department only has federal funds is that right that's a big issue yes Donna. Uh, we, we have some emergency assistance uh, to, to take care of the issues for flood zone mm -hmm. where we're uh, we can go in with tribal funds and do that but we've we pretty much had obligated uh, the biggest part of those already uh, but we've got some sitting out there uh, some some applications where they're now in a floodplain. Uh, we actually had one, I think it was in Delaware County, I uh, don't remember the exact location, where we were in the process of uh, doing a replacement. We were going to get them a replacement trailer. And uh, the environmental will not, you know, it comes back in the flood zone. So something you, I think it, what I'm hearing is, if we want to set up for catastrophes through your department, then we're going to need to allocate some tribal funds for that use. Well, we, we do have. We've uh, got... Uh, do you have enough, though? Well, we last year, in physical year 10, they were enough. This year, we're, we're skating by. Uh, just, you know, we're going to be spend every nickel we got. And with the tribal funds, if we had those, you can we can actually uh, do different things because the policies don't have to be the same. As exactly. And, and in this in the flood and disaster, we're working with community services. Their emergency, in the case of a disaster, they can do more than two thousand. They can do up to five, and they they've agreed to do that. So my folks are are uh, uh, doing the assessment on the homes. And once we have the cost estimates and everything, we'll go to them and... and uh, now, will their policy, is it going to be based on income or because it's an emergency situation? Well, it's, it's up to 80%. 80% of the... Uh, National median income. Now, could we, as a body here, uh, modify that since those are tribal funds? That, I guess I, we could, couldn't we? I don't have a clue, but I guess so. Okay, so that five thousand pot. I guess that's Norma. Is she still here? Uh, that would. Act, I think that that would probably be. Charlie. Charlie. The administration okay. might might say that that's their call. To be honest with you, but so I, I don't know. There is five, maybe up to five thousand that's available <coughs> now in Charlie's group for these uh, flood situations that we've just had occur, and those are tribal funds. Yeah. And. <coughs> Their policy right now covers only 80% of the national medium income. Yes. But as a body, that could be modified. And we might possibly take that up when we talk about housing at 12. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to take one more. Mr. Garvin, you had your hand up. Yes. Uh, I was wanting to inquire about uh, an elder lady down the forum. She's, she's in the running for a FEMA trader. She, She's still in the mix. Give me, give me your name afterwards. Okay. And I'll, I'll check on Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Thank you, David. Uh, Michael, we have a question for you. I think the full committee wants to hear it. I apologize. Uh, can you give us an update on the Bradley Ford Bridge? Because that's so important to all of us down yes. in northeastern Oklahoma. and. The contract, the IRR contract on that five and a half miles from downtown Nycut over to the bridge. Right. The the Bradley Ford Bridge, Councilor Fulbright's uh, asking about, is a bridge located in Sequoia County on what we're calling the Nycut South Project. It's uh, had recently had the contract uh, terminated on that project. 
between the contract termination and the process of getting it rebid, the floods occurred and washed out the embankment around the uh, be the southern abutment of the bridge. Uh, the bridge abutment is concrete is just hanging there in the air. Uh, been working with the county, the uh, circuit engineering district uh, that is associated with the county, and they have been looking at or uh, doing bridge inspection or an inspection, I should say, on that bridge. They determined that uh, uh, the last bridge inspection that was performed by the state, uh, or ODOT, had a very extremely high sufficiency rating, which is, is a very good thing for a bridge. Uh, the engineer for the circuit engineering district that we've been working with has, has determined that an additional span, uh, the creek is trying <coughs> to change, cha change uh, direction as it comes around that bend, an additional span uh, be added to that bridge, as well as some uh, embankment protection to when that uh, stream does try to change. Long story short, the uh, CED, Circuit Engineering District, is going to be designing an additional span for that, about 60 to 100 feet. They don't know for the exact length yet uh, to add to that structure. If you remember in Mays County about three years ago or so, they had the bridge washed out there over Saline Creek. Same exact situation we have down here. The, you know, the county came in and added another span to that bridge and you'd never know it today. Uh, it's going to be the same situation we have here. We will be able to fund that uh, repair through the IRR program because it was already a prioritized project uh, on our system. So it's going to work out uh, really well. The county's supposed to be installing a temporary detour right now uh, and working on that. So that's a real quick update. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Uh, Commerce uh, Housing Report, Dan. Hello. Um, you have a copy of our report. I would like to just point out on the weatherization question that you asked, the Individual Development Account Program also works for rehab and weatherization on a home. <clears throat> Other than that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay. All right, thank you. We were running a little short on time, but thank you for your report. Moving on to old business, I see now I'm moving on to new business. There's a resolution. The resolution uh, approving and authorizing the submission of the fiscal year 2011 ended housing plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. I hear a motion. Uh, so moved to approve. I hear a second. Second. Chris, no, Chris. comment. Do I, I going to have a, do I, do I hear a second? Second. Okay. okay. Okay, now we'll go into comments on the, uh, Ms. Jordan. I just want to make sure, Harley, that I understand this correctly. Uh, there's a need to pass these three, one, two, and three, on the agenda today so that we're timely. But is it my understanding now that we're still working through our subgroup to work on the budgets concerning these three plans? Yes, what I understand, and Martin, correct me if I'm wrong, we'd like to go ahead and get the 2011 plan because that's just to get the money down here. We don't anticipate spending any dollars this fiscal year on the 2011. Is that right, Martin? Yes, from this particular agenda item, it's more of a procedural Indian housing plan, the 2011. We would like to get it passed at this meeting. Um, uh, and I'm not sure what the plan is. We're uh, perfectly prepared on the next agenda item uh, um, to uh, pass it later in the month if, if that's uh, if that's what we need to do. So, uh, so what I propose doing is go ahead and, and if we can, if we're okay with the resolution that just got the uh, uh, submittal to go ahead and pass that and then we'll take a look at the next resolution and maybe have a plan for that. Well, so, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Aye. Have one uh, opposed. Okay, we'll go to number two, a resolution approving and authorizing the submission of physical year 2012 Indian Housing Plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, what I'd like is a motion to approve and, and to second that motion, then we can have discussion on so we'll move that. So a motion to move. Have a, have a second of that motion. I'll second. All right, you have a motion second. And now we can have some discussion on it, but let me just say that we can have some short discussions here. And what I would propose to do is move this over to the 
uh, executive finance committee to, to have a housing work group plan prior to that, and then maybe discuss it more. But we can discuss it today. We still have some time. But, Ms. Jordan. I would ask that we do just what you propose, that this one be moved to executive finance later in the month so that we can talk about this one at our housing meeting that we're going to have at 12 o'clock. That's fine with me. Mark, do you have a comment? Yeah. Uh, if I, uh, a different uh, thing that may accomplish the same thing, you know, we normally have special committee meetings when the new Indian housing plan comes about. What we could do is recess this meeting and then reconvene it before rules, say 30 minutes, an hour, or whatever, and reconvene this meeting and then discuss only the 2012 IHP at okay. that point in time. If we could for next week, it's Mr. a different. Mr. Chairman, that, that would be fine to you. Uh, Mr. Yes, you're we've we've already got another uh, special meeting scheduled at noon on that day. So, yeah, what we may do is move a meeting up before that, uh, uh, Julia. Maybe an hour before that. So okay. this plan, I think this one needs to be in by July the first, March the sixteenth. For July the sixteenth, yeah. we could probably do it both, and, and that would be a uh, the work group meeting that day, and then move the resolution over to executive finance the same day, and then get it moved on. Oh. Yeah, hang on, I've got a couple of people here, Marvin. Um, Mr. Thornton, you had a question? Uh, yeah, I have a question for you. Uh, on this uh, housing plan, if it's approved and passed and it goes goes on to wherever it goes, we receive our funding, can there be any change orders made in this plan after the fact? In other words, the next council that comes up can change this housing plan? Sure, the uh, Indian housing plan is, uh, is a means to uh, tell HUD, here's how we're going to use the money. You can always amend the Indian housing plan, and we can't even implement this Indian housing plan, even if we pass it, because what has to happen is all these amounts have to go into our comprehensive budget, and so the council can even change the Indian housing plan at the camp, uh, budget process. Uh, so you have this passing this plan doesn't really in, doesn't allow us to implement anything. It basically gets us the money, and and so then there will be several. After it's implemented, it can be changed, right? Uh, After it's implemented, it can be changed. Oh yeah, yes, oh, it, it can be amended as many times as we want. That's what uh, I understood. Yes. Yes, when that's they, that's they correct. Has them over, that's that. correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And then, and that's okay. one good thing about it. Always keep in mind that yeah, we can make change to the Indian housing plan. I think what the 2000 plan basically is going to do is take all the old housing plans and roll those dollars up into one, where we don't have to track housing dollars that are four or five years old. So I think in a accounting procedure, it, it'll certainly make it a lot easier to, to track those funds. So. But that's what we'll be discussing and, and also talking about more of what we want into the plan. But you had a comment, Mark? Yeah, and it follows along that same line uh, when I mentioned it really has got to go be implemented through the budget process. And that's why previous to this year, the Indian Housing Plan has been approved through this committee, and then it goes directly to Tribal Council. It doesn't go, or it hasn't been going through ENF or rules or any of the others, because it's really not a budget, because a budget will come later. And so it, it has normally, in the last few years, Doug, is that correct? It's, yeah, the last several years, it's gone directly from here to be put on the agenda of the Tribal Council. That's why I thought it might be appropriate to recess this particular meeting, then consider it sometime Thursday, and then if it gets passed, go go to Tribal Council. Okay, so we'll, have, we'll send this first resolution directly to the Tribal Council. Okay, do I hear a motion to uh, have a... Uh, I guess we don't need a motion to do that. I'll just call for a special meeting on the Housing Group Plan. Yeah. 11 o'clock. On the 20th. Right. So we'll just I'm just announcing that we'll have it at eleven o'clock on are you, the twenty sixth. Are, yes. are you gonna recess this meeting to eleven yes, o'clock? Yes, I think that's, that's yes, what he's okay. right. Thank you for that. Yeah. Then you don't need an agenda, right? You right. just reconvene it at eleven o'clock. So I'll make a motion that we recess to eleven o'clock. 
Okay. We need to do that adjournment. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Point of information. Where are we at? We're on the. Uh, no, no, on motions on the floor. We're in discussion on the motion. We had a motion and a second. Now we're in discussion on that. So what we're going to do at the end of this meeting is move that to a uh, special meeting or a housing plan meeting on the 26th. 20, we're going to reconvene this motion and move it there. Table this motion. At what time? Right. Yeah, I think it's at 11 o'clock. I think Julia has one at 12. Who made the motion to the table? We haven't yet. None. I make a motion that we table item two and recess and following other discussions today until 11 o'clock <laughs> on the day of rules. I'll say that. I'll say that. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Now, Let's go ahead and move on to the next agenda item and then a resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application by the Department of Children, Youth, and Family Services for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Family Violence Prevention and Service Program for Victims of Family Violence. There are motions to approve. So moved. You're second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, I want to go back and make sure they're clear on the uh, resolution number two. That's not an Indian housing plan meeting. That is a uh, uh, agenda item, right? Yes. Recess, community service. Okay, community service. Recess. So everybody is welcome to attend that meeting and hope that we all do. So we need to fill committee. Okay, moving on to announcements. Is there any announcements? Seeing none, here are most to adjourn. No, so, I move that we recess. Okay. All right. Got a motion to recess in the second to the 26th. All in favor say aye. Aye. And in poll, same time. Now, do I hear any announcements? Seeing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn? No. No, no we recess. We recess. We recess. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Right. Well, we're here. Right. 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 Here. Right.